Hey everybody, how's it going? Well, I'm bored like I said I would be, and just in here in the University of Finley darkroom, um, yeah, just carbon printing all day long. Got negatives here, have yesterday's prints sitting over there. Uh, that low hum noise you're hearing in the background, that's the, uh, that's the vacuum contact printer going. I'm exposing a negative right now, and right now I'm also developing a print. This is one I really want to peel for everybody at home that's never seen a carbon peel, there's a couple of videos here on YouTube that, well, they illustrate it about the same. But I'm going to see if I can do this peel one-handed. Maybe I won't be able to. Let's see. Ready? One, two, three. And making the peel. Ooh, nice. That was a good, clean peel. And now we're just going to agitate a little bit, let her drain off, going back in, and we can already see a very faint image emerging. It's, uh, it's one of my barbershop pictures, it's the dog on the chair. <laughs> but it had some really good contrast, and yeah, I just wanted to see what it looked like printed. So um, this is just a pretty much up to time and temperature now, so the water is about probably 110 degrees now, it's cooled down a bit. And carbon likes to start really melting in this warm water at about 100 degrees and sometimes up all the way up to 150 degrees. Now these areas here that are nice and black, this is, uh, this is a grossly overexposed area. I kind of call it, I like to call it the symbiote because it's just kind of this gloppy, black, nasty stuff. And it's, it gets kind of leathery when it gets super, super overexposed, way over hardened is, is what the potassium dichromate sensitizer does to it. So... There we go, give this a little more agitation, and it's, it's a very patient process, so if you're not a patient person, try carbon, you will be. There we go, a lot more of it's coming out. You can kind of see uh, some of the relief as it's, you know, the, the, the darkest parts are raised up, and the whitest parts are the paper base. And we're just going to keep on cooking this guy. In fact, I'm going to switch sinks, and we'll keep cooking it until it's a finished print. And All right, we're back. Uh, it's a couple minutes later. The print, as you can see, is just getting a little bit lighter. There's uh, hot water in this uh, other part of the University of Finley Art Department. So what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of agitating. And there's just a little bit of excess pigment that's going to come off. We'll look right there. See how there's some discoloration there? It's not completely clear. So we're just going to keep on printing it until it is nice and juicy. But right now it's uh, it's pretty close to finished. I kind of want uh, a little more white in the dog, even though that wasn't the brightest highlight when I shot the picture. <coughs> Obviously it was coming from these compact fluorescent bulbs here. But the great thing about uh, carbon, well some people like it, some people don't, but carbon lends itself very well to um, very, very, very dense uh, negatives print well on it. So just like platinum and palladium, you need to have a lot of density in your image. So, you know, the, the range here is from, you know, exposure outside, even a little bit of detail in these bulbs up here, all the way to shadow detail in this barber's chair and these cords over here in those shadows. So you have to make, you know, very, very uh, long exposures. Um, highly dilute developers and or, or compensating developers to keep your highlights and that's uh, that's what prints really well with carbon so you know thanks a lot for watching guys and maybe I'll have some more videos with uh, the whole process <laughs> of carbon on here this is just one very 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 small part of the process and probably the most rewarding um, this is yeah this is why I print carbon so talk to you later